we've been reading now for several weeks from St. Paul's letter to the Hebrews. And we know at the heart of that message to the early Christians, who were now beginning to face tremendous persecution in the church, those who believed in Jesus Christ were being put to death, suffering great tortures, being asked to choose literally between life and death. And St. Paul is encouraging those early Christians in the hardships that they were encountering to hold fast to the Lord. At the heart of that letter is the reminder of what Jesus the high priest did for the redemption of of the world and for the forgiveness of our sins, the sacrifice of his own life on the cross. And front and center is the passion and the death of our Lord. It is through the blood of the cross that we find salvation. And St. Paul is encouraging those Christians to endure their trials. Strengthen your drooping hands and your weak knees, St. Paul writes. Make straight paths for your feet, that what is lame may not be dislocated but healed. There is a purpose in hardship, in suffering. We don't often like to see that, would rather avoid it at all costs. But at the heart of St. Paul's invitation is nothing other than a call to faith, to faith in Jesus Christ, to trust in the Lord. There is a perduring attitude among many that if we have strong faith, if we love God, if we keep the commandments, if we pray, if we do everything we should, everything will be wonderful. God never promised that. Anyone who wants to be my follower, Jesus says, you can expect one thing, the cross. We're invited to walk in the steps of Jesus. Our faith in the Lord draws us close to him so that we can learn in our suffering how to be strong. That's what St. Paul writes over and over again in his letters to the Christian communities. It is in weakness that we will find our strength because that strength is the Lord himself, the grace of our relationship with him, our communion with the church, most especially the grace we receive through the sacraments. And so we're called to strong, enduring faith no matter what comes our way. Our sufferings, our trials, our hardships are meant to strengthen us for the things that really matter in life, growing in virtue, in courage, in our ability to be faithful and to endure whatever comes because we know what lies ahead. The fullness of life in the kingdom of God. Jesus stood in the midst in our gospel today of his own family and friends, neighbors, those that knew him from the earliest days of his life. And yet they failed to recognize the very presence of God in their midst. It can't be Jesus. Isn't he the carpenter's son? What kind of wisdom has been given him? Where did he get all of this? They can't imagine in their wildest dreams that this son of Mary and Joseph is the savior of the world, despite what they hear, despite what they see, despite the faith of so many other people who have encountered Jesus along the way. And what does the Lord say? He was amazed at their lack of faith. It's no different for us. Jesus is in our midst. He has come into our life through baptism. 
He's here present in the Holy Eucharist, the very presence of his Son, the Son of God, Jesus himself. Do we recognize him? Do we hear the word that is God himself? Or do we fail to see? That's what faith calls us to, no matter what our circumstances in life, no matter what our struggles, our doubts, our hardships, our failings. We're called to recognize the very presence of Jesus and respond with faith, with great trust in the Lord, with the belief that with the Lord, we can accomplish everything that God desires. And so we pray that the words of St. Paul that we hear today will be taken to heart to endure our trials with great love, to know with certainty that God is always with us, he never abandons us, and that it is in and through our sufferings that we can be perfected and made holy and continue on that journey that will take us from this life through the power of God to eternal and everlasting life in the glory of God's kingdom. Thank you.